The media is normalizing MMT. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article from Triple, Triple J, the hack, discussing MMT or normalizing it and introducing it to people. So, here's the question. How come Australia suddenly has billions of dollars to pay for welfare? Yeah, good question. How does Australia have billions of dollars to pay for welfare? With the pandemic, governments around the world have been spending huge amounts to support citizens forced to stay at home and to prop up economies that threaten to collapse. The Australian government's stimulus package totals around $200 billion so far, or about a third of total government debt before the pandemic. Just think about that, guys. It's going to get bigger. It'll get bigger. This may sound dry, but it has huge implications. And this, this is concerning, guys, because a lot of people don't understand that government debt is our debt, that government bonds bought by the RBA, we're going to be paying them back through our work. Forget about money. Money is just a way of capturing your work. So you're going to be working those fields. You're going to be, have to sacrifice months and months of your work time every year to the RBA, to the government, to forcefully take taxes off you. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It really does. It doesn't, doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair that an institution can generate something out of nothing and we're all enslaved to work for years. And our children and our children's children, but that's the world we're in. So if you're in your 20s, paying off the national debt incurred through the illness welfare could define a large part of your life. It could mean less government spending, which would mean worse public transport, fewer government jobs, less welfare or government assistance for buying a first home and more expensive course fees. Now, this is the hack, guys. So you're going to have a very left-leaning interpretation of all of this. It's just something we need to put up with you know I, I think less government jobs is fantastic government should stay out of the you know <laughs> out of um first home buying and bring up the university market the reason the university is so expensive in the united states is because of government intervention guys government guaranteeing student loans that's why their university sector went so expensive it'd be interesting it's interesting to see if there's more competition more freedom and easier for people to set up education institutions because you some of the infrastructure for a lot of courses isn't necessary research is a different business so or it may not there we go oh boy everyone's getting excited the pandemic is overturning long-standing economic theories including the idea that responsible governments means reducing national debt if central banks can print money like they're doing now why don't they just print more of the stuff to pay off national debts that are denominated in the national currency? If we have a magic money tree, why haven't we been using it all along? I mean, this this is the hack. This is aimed at young people, isn't it? So they have to frame it in this particular way. Are they, are they even going to ask if it's moral to do this? But then again, our civilization, how many people are living hand to mouth? How many people have got nothing, nothing stashed away? That's the problem. So how to make money out of nothing. About three weeks ago on March 19, the RBA announced it would commence a type of emergency monetary policy action it had never attempted before, quantitative easing or QE. The US and European central banks have successfully, I, no, let's cross that out, have used QE during the global financial crisis that began in 2008. In September 2019, way before the pandemic, the US Federal Reserve, like our RBA, started up the QE machine again in response to sluggish growth and general fears of an economic downturn. Here's how it's meant to work. A government bond is a type of IOU. You buy one and the government promises to buy it back from you after a fixed period, plus pay interest. It's a bit like the government taking out a loan from anyone who wants to buy the bonds. Central banks like the RBA are special kinds of, no, they're privately owned. A special kinds of private institutions tasked with managing the supply of money in the economy. 
by buying or currency in the economy, not money. By buying government bonds from banks and pension funds, the RBA is increasing the supply of money. So who gets the first benefit of it? Um, there's a, a, actually, I want to bring something up here. So it's actually taken me a bit of time to find that term I was looking for. It's taken two days because I forgot the name of it. And it's the Cantillon effect. Now, the reason I couldn't find it, it's a very old theory, very old economics theory developed by Richard Cantillon hundreds of years ago. And well, it's not really on any of the mainstream economic theories. No one's talking about it. I couldn't find it on Bestopia. I had to find it in some of the Austrian economic theories. So what I thought we'd have a look at, I'll bring it up here. So the Cantillon effect refers to the change in relative prices resulting from a change in money supply. The change in relative prices occurs because the change in money supply has a specific injection point and therefore a specific flow path through the economy. And this is from the American Institute of Economic Research. And I find it's quite a good summary of it. Now, what Cantillon is describing here is essentially a bubble. You've got to think about it. Where the money is injected into the economy, well, those first receivers of that money are going to have a comparative advantage because they will be spending that money when inflation hasn't kicked in, when the effects of the money supply flowing through the economy haven't been experienced by the entire economy. And then it will create bubbles. Now, where, where have we seen in the recent past, very recent, where money supply has been created that has created a bubble well maybe maybe and we'll bring up i'll bring up a website right here so i'll bring this quote down i'll bring up a website here trading economics and we will have have a look everyone maybe just a theory let's bring up the nasdaq 100 and we'll go to the 10-year chart so we had what was it 2008 since then since the GFC, I oh, will go 25 years. Since the GFC here fell and we had QE, 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 several bouts of QE, quantitative easing. And just recently now we've got QE to infinity. So where is that money going? Well, it's going to the bonds. Who owns the bonds? A lot of the banks own the bonds among, among other institutions and organizations. What are they going to do with the money? They're going to be spending it on consumer goods. No, they'll be plowing it back into this part of the economy, the share market. Now, depending on the distribution of ownership of the shares and the liquidity of it, of how many people are just going to move it in the market to the rest of the economy, it's going to take some time before that bubble ripples through everywhere else or until it bursts. So that's why. That's why this is such an important term, an important lesson I wanted to bring up to everyone. So that's what we're going to see here in Australia. And that's one of the problems with MMT, with modern monetary theory. Fundamentally, there's a supply issue, guys. And even if you gave every man and his dog money, that's still going to cause issues at that level. It's going to cause inflation everywhere. So let's get back to it. This leads to the question, where does the RBA get its money? As part of managing the supply of money, central banks have a very special ability. They can issue legal tender, aka print money. To buy the government bonds, the RBA issues itself billions in new Australian dollars. This money is essentially unlimited. There you are. In mid-March, for example, the U.S. Federal Reserve unveiled $1.19 trillion in QE using money it created out of nothing. Out of nothing. Eight days later, it went even further. It announced it was buying unlimited amounts of government bonds, a step some called going nuclear. A major central bank has never done this before. Do we even have to pay the debt back? 
the government will have to pay back these bonds or debt at some point. But since the interest rate is so low now, this money is essentially free. Free money. In March, the government took out a 12-year loan worth $1.2 billion at an interest rate of 0.8185%. Given the, given the current inflation rate, the rate at which money loses its value, is around 1.8%, when 2032 rolls around, the government will effectively be paying less than $1.2 billion it originally borrowed to pay off the debt. Now, it just it sounds all good, but it's creating these bubbles, everyone, with the, the supply of money. And is it, is it moral? Is it moral? Because they're reducing, by increasing the supply of money, they're also reducing the purchasing power of our money, of our savings. So it's another tax. So it may sound good that the government is paying back less. Wow, but the value of all our money is also worth less. Of all our savings is worth less over that time. So this is hard to grasp. For years we've been told that debt is a threat to the national economy. One of the government's main aims has been to pay it off. Well, no, it's not hard to grasp. This is no, I, I, What's hard to grasp is how people are... Well, no, it's a confidence trick. It's a confidence trick. If, so long as people have confidence in the money, they're going to keep spending it. As so long as the supply just keeps getting pumped into the stock market or the housing market, and then we have the wealth effect. But until you know something comes along like, along, like a pandemic that may burst that illusion, and then people start hoarding it. So that not, no longer makes sense, at least according to several prominent economists, including Nobel winner, Paul Krugman. For the Australian public, this could mean a new era of cashed-up government services rather than the opposite, penny-pinching measures like cuts to health and education. Some economists go even further. Ultimately, they say governments could just pay off their own debt, which is in their own currency, through printing more money. I mean, do people not see the issue? I guess, no, they don't. I guess, no, they don't. Just for me to find this this quote, for me to find this quote, it wasn't on, I went, I literally, I couldn't remember the name. I knew it started with C. I couldn't remember the name because I'd learned about it on a, uh, what's his name? Max Kaiser, you were mentioning it. That's where I first learned about it. And then today, um, I saw another video where they mentioned it. So I, I thought I had to bring it up. But, but. It's not in not in Investopia. I went through every single thing in their glossary then and I couldn't find it. So maybe that's why people think this. And and, you know, Catalon is not a nobody in the world of economics, everyone. And uh, I want to do a, a you know, start a book club where we will read some of his books and I'll do that in another video. But he influenced several prominent economists you know, including Adam Smith. So we should be paying attention to some of his work. So that may sound absurd, like shifting $5 from your left pocket to your right and claiming you're $5 richer. But it's an idea that suddenly shot to prominence as governments have taken on huge amounts of debt. Well, no, it hasn't. It's, it's been around for a long time. It's been tried many times in the past. It's been tried since ancient history and it never works. It never works. Broadly, this is known as modern monetary theory. For decades now, Western governments have operated on the idea that governments and the public they serve have to live within their means. Bullshit. That's bullshit. Okay, I'm calling bullshit on that. How, what governments have actually lived within their means? Can you name one? Look at the debt in the US. Look at the debt in Europe. Look at the debt in Australia. Trillions of dollars. America's just going crazy live within their means. Now, that's the rhetoric they're saying to people because that's how people understand the economy. But they've been using MMT for a while or, you know, in, in, in everything but name. This means that governments should only spend as much as they have, which is what they receive from taxation and some other sources like income from selling public assets. If we imagine a government balance is like a household one, that appears to make sense. MMT is based on a simple idea countries are not like households. 
because they can issue their own currency. They can never run out of money in the same way a business or a person can. Australians can't default on a debt that's in Australian dollars, MMT supporters would say. Yes, but then the value, the value of the dollar can decrease. It can become worthless. You can just keep printing it. But then what they'll do is they'll tax the hell out of you. This is the thing with MMT. They'll tax the hell out of you to, to, to draw the money back out of the economy. So rather than using your taxes to provide services, that, and they use the increased money supply to give whatever they want to buy the votes, and then they tax the hell out of you to extract it out of that, try and reduce inflation, to keep it under control. It's very manipulative. Very manipulative. And it's, it's concerning me a lot that we're heading down this path, that all the world's nations are going to take a shaft, a sharp turn socialist. And, and, I mean, they've mentioned nothing about the implications of this. Anyway, we'll keep going. Because they can issue their own currency, they can never run out of money in the same way a business or a person can. Australia can't default on a debt that's in Australian dollars, MMT supporters would say. To break this down into very simple terms, Hack enlisted Emma Dawson, Executive Director of Per Capita Think Tank. A mortgage is a debt taken out against an asset. If you don't pay, you lose the house, she said. A country also takes a debt out against its assets, which is the Australian people and their productive capacity as a nation. I mean, there you go. That, that just shows it quite clearly. But Australia will always be here producing goods and services, unlike a car or house, which can be taken away. Well, no. No, we won't. We're not here right now. Our economy has shrunk. There are predictions that it'll shrink by 25%. As long as we keep producing goods and services, which we're not right now, and money keeps flowing through the economy, the national debt never has to be repaid. It never has to be repaid. What do you think about that? So we never have to pay it back. This is where it gets interesting. Under MMT, a government can create any amount of money at once. Won't this cause hyperinflation, like in Germany in the 20s, when wheelbarrows of cash bought a loaf of bread, or Zimbabwe, where inflation is at 500%, meaning the cost of goods increased by five hundred five times a year. The MMT response to this is that a government may have infinite piles of cash, but it shouldn't always spend them freely. <laughs> oh, so we're depending on the sensible, sensible decisions of political leaders who want to give away stuff to buy favours. This is the naivety of this system right here. This is the naivety of the system right here. It'll fail. It'll fail, guaranteed, every time. In other words, the limit on government spending shouldn't be the budget, but inflation. Here's that idea, in, and how do they control inflation? Wait, wait. Here's that idea in more detail. MMT says inflation will only happen when aggregate demand, all the purchasing being done in the economy, outstrips the goods and services available for purchase, the supply. If there are lots of dollars trying to purchase stuff and not enough stuff to purchase, that stuff becomes more expensive. So long as the economy keeps producing enough goods and services, the theory goes it won't have too much inflation. Well, we're not going to have that. We're, we're not going to be producing more goods and services. Our economy has become quite primitive. We're dependent on foreign nations for manufactured goods because we don't have a cost uh, our population is too small so we can't get the same scale advantages as other civilizations among other things our cost base is quite high compared to other civilizations so we've resorted to this and this is the thing i don't know i'm trying to figure out how australia can reinvigorate our manufacturing industry without instigating protectionist policies because remember everyone a tariff is simply a tax that we all pay not the nation selling you the goods it's another tax we pay. Don't that needs to be remembered, you know? Because everyone, everyone, if they wanted to buy higher quality or support local manufacturing, it would still be here because people would be paying the premium for it. But everyone's talk. People can't afford to. Their wages aren't going up. They have to save money. That's just the way it is. Anyway, for this re reason, MMT advocates say government should spend freely during periods of high employment as the economy can't, shouldn't spend freely during periods of high employment as the economy can't increase production to meet the extra demand and therefore be at risk of inflation. 
With so many Australians unemployed, this isn't a current issue. But we can't increase production because we're in lockdown. So long as inflation is not an issue, government can spend what they want. If government wants to pay for universal health care and free university, it can do that. If it wants to build huge amounts of public housing and allow young people to get into the market, it can do that. If it wants to keep the job seeker allowance above 1000 a fortnight, the boosted amount for the illness stimulus, instead of dropping it back down to 550 it can do that too, at least according to advocates of MMT. The reason it can do this, and this is the brain-melting part of MMT, is that taxes do not pay for government spending, but are just ways of managing inflation. There you go. There you go. Is that moral? Because taxes, taxes are completely done by force. The government has, even if you're an advocate for taxes and you enjoy paying taxes, you know, fantastic, pay extra. But the government has a heavily armed people that will take you to court and jail you if you don't pay your taxes. So, is it moral for them to be using that to regulate inflation in the economy? Because inflation is just another way you're losing value. So instead, the government creates money whenever it spends it's too good to be yeah I, this is too good to be true and this is concerning that they're trying to mainstream this and hack there can be a lot of idiots that listen to this and just eat it all up because the, the problem is people will just see people are very short-sighted they uh, a lot of people don't see the big picture they think they do but they really don't and they're just gonna you know they're, they're the swing voters they'll go to whoever gives them the most stuff and the danger is here is the danger here is that greed and political power will overcome any desire to manage the economy properly because it's happened every bloody time in history, in all of history. How's it going to be different this time? It's such arrogance. Such arrogance. So, admittedly, unlimited money does sound too good to be true. There are many who say MMT is voodoo economics. However, in the last few weeks, the circumstances... The criticisms have died down and MMT has suddenly become a respectable economic idea. Has it? Really? No. We've become desperate. The the bubble, the, the almost everything bubble is popping because of a global pandemic. Governments are instigating complete lockdown, so this is all they have left. And it's no different to what's happened in the past. Conservative financial news outlets are running articles like here's hoping the MMT crowd is correct and we're all modern monetary monetarists now. In Australia, it's caused less of a splash, but there are signs the 40-year economic orthodoxy of only spending tax dollars has begun to falter. We haven't only been spending tax dollars. Why the hell do we have a trillion dollar debt? This is the thing. No, this bullshit. Come on, hack. Look at the debt level. Look at the current debt level. Shadow Treasurer John Chalmers last week wrote an opinion piece for The Guardian declaring neoliberalism has failed. Per capita, Emma Daw per capita's Emma Dawson, who was once a senior policy advisor in the Rudd and Gillard government, told Hack she is convinced the pandemic is forcing a change to thinking about government spending and debt. Well, I've got little confidence in the during the Rudd and Gillard government periods. I mean, look at the building education revolution. It didn't work. We got saved because China went nuts. That's why, and demanded our resources. That's how we got saved. To have a, sh to have a shadow treasurer, says neoliberalism, has failed. You wouldn't have seen that any time in my life. There's a shift, she said. Alan Collar, who is a well-respected mainstream business journalist, said that all bets are off whether MMT will become the new orthodoxy. Capitalism has to close for a while and the state has to step up, he wrote. Oh, shit. The governments just keep doing what they're always doing, which is to scrimp and borrow or try something new. This isn't new. This is not new. Okay. Maybe it'd be good if we actually did try capitalism without this interventionist economy. Oh, bloody hell. Why haven't we been doing it all along? <laughs> well, we pretty much have. Perhaps because it doesn't work. Maybe MMT is a bad theory. Another reason may be that neoliberal ideas are just as arbitrary and voodoo as MMT, but they have, they have the advantage of suiting the powerful. Emma Dawson from Per Capita told Hack 
She saw the pandemic stimulus and quantitative easing as proof the old rigid economic doctrines are made up, a way of keep, keep, keeping people working harder with lower expectations. We've been told there's no magic money tree, she said. Well, there is, and they've just used it. Bloody hell. Having shown that it can create money when needed, it may be hard for the government to justify cutting spending again, she said. Yes. No, she's right there. She's 100% right there. Every special interest group is going to plow onto this. So if you get this magic money, take advantage of it, guys. Turn it into something that's going to hold its value if we get insane inflation or if the Australian dollar plunges. The big question is whether Australia will resort to austerity measures slashing government spending and selling off the few remaining national industries like Australia Post after the pandemic has passed. After the pandemic, the government will want to return to business as usual, Emma said. The increase to the job seeker payment will be hard for them to reverse. They'll be looking to cut other services. I'll be worried about money for ABC, SBS, and NDIS and other government programs. MMT may be a way out of what may be needless economic misery oh bloody hell so i mean there you go guys there you go what do you think they're drawing links between qe relating it to mmt and they're just dismissing all of the concerns well we'll have to see let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or on Patreon for a small monthly fee. You can support the channel using our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay, or our referral links at Independent Reserve and KuCoin. We have merch available from Heiser Says or Teespring. You can send us gold via Gold Pass from the Perth Mint and PayPal if you want to make a donation that way. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video.